All right, let's look at the stoichiometry for that redox titration. And in this case, remember, we have to find the concentration of KMnO4, so we're standardizing it. So we're uh, titrating a primary standard with KMnO4 in order to find its concentration. And once we have the concentration of the permanganate ion, then we can find the concentration of other things, such as hydrogen peroxide. That's what we're going to find in the lab. So let's look at this example. We have, remember, four trials. The first trial is where you're just trying to find a ballpark volume. So in this case, we can see it turned dark pink, and it's at a large volume of 17.70. So then we do three more trials, and we try to get our three trials all within 0.1 of each other. In this case, these are within 0.2 of each other, but we're going to aim for 0.1. So once I get this data, I have to do the math, the stoichiometry. So let's just remember before we start what's what. In the burette was the KMnO4. So the volume that's reported here is the KMnO4 volume. If we read the title, we can get the other information. Okay? It says we got 10 milliliters of tin 2 chloride and its concentration is 0 0.500 moles per liter. Okay, we'll pay attention to that when we start stoichiometry. So don't forget, in stoichiometry, you have to have a balanced equation. And the way you do that differently than Chem 20 is you have to find the net ionic redox equation by listing your species. So remember it said, okay, let's look back. We have KMnO4 and tin 2 chloride in an acidic environment. So you have to list all your species. So I'm going to do that. We have SN2+. I'm not putting in states because this pen is whack. Okay, we got Cl minus. It said that there was KMnO4, that dissociates because it's soluble, to K plus and MNO, MnO4 minus. Okay? Um, it said that it's an acidic environment, so we add H plus. Okay? And then we know that water is a solvent, so we have to list that. So you have to list all your species, and then you have to identify as OAs or RAs. Remember, creamy snot feels hot. That's which ones occur as both OAs and RAs. Snot is SN, so that's an OA slash RA. Chloride is on the RA side, and chloride with water is an RA. You have to remember that one. K plus is an OA. MnO4 minus is an OA, but only in the presence of hydrogen. So you have to link it. H plus is an OA. And H2O is an OA slash RA. So that's the first thing you do. Then you identify which is your strongest oxidizing agent, which is your strongest reducing agent. We know the MnO4 is a strong oxidizing agent. And in this case, if you look at the table that we have in our Chemistry 30 data book, we'll find our SRA is SN2+. Once all that's done, we write our half reactions. They're all written for you. So remember, your SOA, you write it exactly as you see it from the data booklet. And your SRA, you flip it so that one is showing as an oxidation and the other as showing as a reduction. Okay? When we look at these two half reactions, you have to make sure the electrons lost equal the electrons gained. So I have to multiply this half reaction by 2 to get 10 electrons. I have to multiply this half reaction by 5 to get 10 electrons. And then you can see I have the net equation. All of that work is step one. That is your chemical equation. Now we have that chemical equation. We have to do the stoichiometry. Okay? Remember, we had, an, oh, we didn't calculate it. You have to calculate the average from the titration. So these are our three good trials. You have to show the work, okay? So you have to actually go through and say, well, the average volume, show all your work. I'm not going to right now, but if I did this, I can see that 16.80 milliliters. So that's the average of the three good trials, okay? So now let's go to our equation. Let's write down what we know. That was coming from the burette, so I know the volume. I can convert that to, what was it? It was... 1680 liters. That was the volume of permanganate. I don't know the concentration of permanganate. That's what we're looking for. So this is our required substance. Tin, we know this. So the volume was 10 milliliters. That's what we pipetted. 
I'm going to write that down. And we know the concentration that was provided in the question at 0 0.5, 0, 0 moles per liter. Now I can get started. Let's try unit analysis here. We're going to try to avoid the formulas. Start with what we know, get to what we need. I know the information of our given here is tin, and remember a permanganate is our required. Start with moles of given. So, here we go. I'm going to say, well, we had 0 0.0100 liters of SM2+. Plus. Okay, then multi, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Pen is whacked. Times the concentration, 0 0.500 Zero, 0 moles per liter, so we can cancel out our liters. Okay, that's our moles of given. Now we need to switch that to moles of required, so don't forget this is step two of stoichiometry, moles of given. Okay, now to get that to moles of required, I multiply by the mole ratio of required over given, so that's 2 moles of MnO4 minus, that is the required moles, okay, divided by 5 moles of given SN2 plus. So now you can see our SN2 plus is cancelling, okay, these moles cancel. If you see what's left, we've got at this point our moles of required, so there's our moles of our required, okay, so moles required. And now we answer the question, which is what is the concentration of MnO4 minus? We're at moles. Concentration is moles per liter. So I'm going to multiply by the volume of MnO4, which we've got up at our beginning, which is 0 0.01680 liters. And that's going to end us with, here we are, at moles of MnO4 minus per liter. Those are the units of the substance we want. The math works out to be 0 0.119 moles per liter with the right sig dig. Okay, that's how you do redox stoichiometry.